Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the topic of everyone who is famous in magic, a large majority of them, I would say 90 to 95% of them, I will name some of them via names, are hypocrites. And you might say, think I'm a hypocrite as well. And maybe I am. So let's begin by saying that I, no one is perfect. And what I'm going to share with you is a lifetime of playing magic. When you're when I was, I think uh, beta was when I was like five or six, and that was my first pack. I enjoy, I loved magic. I spent all time thinking about trades, thinking about decks, and all the decks were very terrible decks. Uh, we didn't play, we played with Ziploc bags and no sleeves, and we would buy these uh, random cards that we, I thought the best card was Herald of Sarah, for the longest time and it's the most beautiful card it's still one of my favorite cards but it, it's not good it, it, it's just not good but I thought it was the best card I'd always be like all right now we're gonna win the game gotta just get to turn four and then actually it would be turn five too because of echo but okay anyway the I want to make this video in light of how hypocritical it is for a magic judge to ban someone who did not accept a bribe and who thought the bribe was a joke, played the game, and 2 owed. And for someone like Eric or Efro, Eric Frolik, one of the people Wizard of the Coast openly supports, one of the people that is, I believe he works for Wizard of the Coast, or his wife does, and they love him, and they give him every advantage, including the ability to ask his opponents to concede, and then he wrote an article saying that, Hey, my opponent didn't concede to me, and he should have because of goodwill. Goodwill for me. And he talks about equity and earned privileges, that pros have more privileges than a regular Magic player, which is true. I, he's not saying anything that would be false. This is the environment he lives in where pros help other pros against non-pros. That's why we have Magic teams. Think about the concept of a magic team. It's a bunch of pros who may not have any other job but play magic, therefore they have more time to commit to the team against a single magic player and maybe they're casual friends. How is a person, and sometimes they do, sometimes they do well, and at that time they need to be punished by these pros. So it's very hypocritical of most of these pros. A lot of times when you look at their personal lives, they say something and they do the exact opposite. I'm not gonna drag personal lives to the, I'm not gonna drag that type of mud into it, but I will say some of your favorite magic pros, they have very interesting personal lives that you look at and you say, all right, it's not illegal, but it's kind of scummy, like very scummy. Uh, again, should we get into another epic war, I will release all of it, but, uh, Needless to say, uh, sometimes when someone is saying I'm holier than you are, they are the ones with the most skeletons and they are the ones with the most dirt on them. So let's talk about equity. In the first use, it refers to Jacob standing at the end of the Swiss and what seed he would be in the top eight if he conceded to his last two opponents. Frolek even points out that he would never choose to play go first in the first game of the match, which is the decision of the higher seed in the top eight against someone who had conceded to him. So the loss of the top eight equity would be significantly reduced. I would never choose to play against someone who just did me a big favor by conceding to Eric. What Jacob would be doing is he would be replacing someone who would have made the top eight instead of Eric and Eric would take his spot because he's, quote, a pro, and he deserves it, and it's equity. Let's read. I have no, this is from Eric, unprovoked, of course. I absolutely have no expectation of someone conceding to me. Everyone can do what's best for them. For many people, conceding is actually what's best for them. It builds up goodwill where someone will go far out of their way to help you in the, quote, future. By attempting to dream crush, you guarantee the opposite will happen, retribution and vengeance. Players may go out of their way to try to dream crush you. Huh. Huh. 
Aha, uh -huh. let me get this straight. If you don't help Eric, he's going to get all his magic friends, all his magic pros, and they're going to try to ruin your life. Huh, interesting. Does Eric get punished for this? No. He gets to write an article that a lot of people click on that he makes him a lot of money. And he gets complimented by magic pros. They all agree with this. That's why I don't want to play at no more GPs, no more of this crap. Like, I'm over it. GPs are for losers. Like, I would just put it that way. If you think you can win at a GP and you're not a part of the Magic team or not part of a Magic program or not part of a sponsored Card Kingdom team, you have zero chance of winning. Like, you just can't win because there's a network of individuals who will dream crush you unless you concede to them. So let me get this straight. Unless I concede... I'm going to get dream crushed by your network. Hypocrite. And so in GP Houston, you have a guy who gets de disqualified, loses all his money, loses the top eight for not recognizing a joke for a bribe was a joke. And he should have reported. It is in this dude's every advantage. If this dude was Eric, he would immediately report it as soon as a split came out. Because you can get an automatic disqualification of this dude, ruin his day, and you go on to the top eight. You don't think Eric would have done... Ex Here we have an example of a rule which is meant to help pros. All of these judges, because they see each other, right? The judges, they see all these pros, they interact with them, maybe they get autographs, who cares? Like The most funny part was when they, we had a time period where we had pro magic players on trading cards like so the advertisement card would not be like for the new set it would be like a pro magic player card and people would collect that i'm like who are these people and why like why would i ever want these like i get it i get it but you also have to understand 95 percent to 99 percent of the magic population cares not in iota about the pro magic players they're mostly casual players and a casual player would act and behave like the guy in gp houston that's his dream to make a top eight. And the judges took it away because he wasn't a magic pro. And when you get to that situation and your name is not Eric Froelich, and your name is not LSV, your name is not one of these, quote, people who you want to build, quote, equity with. Come on now. You think the judge is going to let you win? Okay, let me go back to why this is so hypocritical. Magic Gathering is creating all these new products like Modern League and all these like hype things and they want to promote, you know, certain people. I don't need to name names, but they do want to promote certain people. They want to, they don't even mention Jeremy's name anymore. I mean, they literally, he's persona no grata, right? I mean, they want to ignore him and just make him go away. They want to promote Tolarian. They want to do all weds and all this stuff. And at the end of the day, what they don't realize, and this is a critical marketing mistake on their half, 95 to 99% of the Magic players do not give to, they don't care. GP Houston had 900 players in it. And that was two years ago. Two years from it. So it wasn't like every year it happens. 900 players at a GP Houston where the worst anime convention I've ever been to or ever heard of when DashCon, the Tumblr convention, the possibly the worst convention in the history of conventions, had a thousand people. What the blank? Like, I mean, you talk about you talk about why people don't want to play Magic. Why people don't? It's very simple. There are the haves and there are the have-nots. It's the same with a reserve list. There's people who have cards on a reserve list and are people who do not and cannot play Legacy. The have-nots now have counterfeits, proxies, whatever you want to call them. The haves don't like that. And when you talk about Magic Pros, there are the haves. There's people who are spending 24 hours playing Magic who don't have any other jobs and responsibilities. They don't have families, they might have not have significant others, they might not have any reason not to spend all their time playing Magic. And they're in these teams with other people like themselves, and they can, will always beat you, they will always beat you, because, again, 
Most of us have jobs. Most of us, you know, have responsibilities outside of magic. And the have nots. So you have magic pros, sponsored YouTubers, sponsored people, promoted people. And then you have people who Wizard of Coast could care two cents about. But you know what? Here's the difference. Um, here, here's a very critical difference. And I'll explain it to you from Card Armageddon, which was a convention. They hired and they paid a lot of money to these magic pros like Brian Kibler. He was one of the pros that this convention hired to send. I think the convention was in Las Vegas. And it was the worst turnout in the history of magic conventions. They bled money. They hired all these magic pros, all these magic personalities, all these magic people. And guess what? The average magic player doesn't give two, sh two cents about them. They just want to play magic. Now, you might be like, oh, how, why are you saying this? Don't you like cosplay MTG line? Yes, I love cosplay, but not just magic co cosplay. I like all cosplay. So like, I think it's kind of, I dated this person, her name was Rose, and she was very good at cosplaying. And I understand how much time and dedication it goes into making the costume. Again, she, was a full, she had a full-time job in accounting, so she was working 40 hours a week, and then she would just uh, spend weekends buying stuff, and then after she got home, she would work on it. I get it, it's really difficult to do good cosplay because uh, and especially if you have a full-time job. I get it. Um, but I don't, I think a lot of people in our community, they're afraid to speak out against the Eric's of the magic realm because they'll crush you. Your dream crushed you, as Eric will say. And doesn't feel good. You can't win against Hilarion Community College, right? You can't force him to say that background checks are good and he'll never say it because it doesn't help him. And here, that's the crossroads we're at is Wizard of the Coast is ignoring the large majority of its player base to help a very few entitled individuals. And their actions tell me that they're entitled. What, imagine this. You ask someone to concede, they say no, they 2 owe you. You get so mad, you write an article unprovoked, unnecessary, where you say that this guy should have conceded because you would have given, you would have helped him later on in the future. This guy probably, this is probably his only event. Like, how does he know he's gonna help, you're gonna help him in the future? And he's saying, oh, you know, someone who's helped me, I'm gonna get all my friends to, you know, help them and that he can play first anytime he wants, right? He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. He gets people DCI qualified. This DCI banned at the local game store. Like, this is our role models. Like, and this is just magic related. I'm going to try to focus on magic related. But once you get into personal stuff, it, it gets pretty bloody bad. It gets bad. Anyway, bye guys.